from the day that they were born, they were told, okay, when you need to poop, sit down <laughs> on the toilet and poop, right? Imagine you were told to stand up when you poop. You would have been doing that your whole life. <laughs> have that one be the main one huh? yeah it's good welcome to the npc podcast the best f-ing podcast on f-ing planet earth you got that right and here we have alex sedlak the man the myth the legend the absolute tiktok beast that <laughs> speaks the truth and he says what needs to be heard and we're here with matt Lorian. matt how you feeling about being about being here today honestly dude this is this is pretty f-ing sweet i'm not gonna lie i've yeah. never really done like a professional podcast like this but uh yeah, dude, this is fucking legit. I, I have never heard myself in a microphone like this. Like this is this is fucking awesome, Matt. What what were your intentions about this? Because you texted me the other day and you were like, "Yo, like, we need to fucking rip a podcast, bro." Honestly, it was a little bit impulsive. It was a little impulsive, but I'm like, "Yo, both of our minds, we have so much to speak on, like, like so many things, and that's mostly including like the matrix, financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically." Everything in that realm to do with the Matrix and just simply thinking outside of the box, questioning everything, as you say. And you can only say so much on TikTok, dude, because yeah, both of bro. us, was it 30, 60 seconds? Bro, you know? That shit's so fucked. Yo, Matt's talking to a TikTok rep tomorrow, and he, he, you, you better put that girl on blast, bro. <laughs> Be like, yo, who the fuck is in charge of the shadow ban and shit? Because this is getting out of hand. I say, bro, it's. I'm, I'm just going to assume that the people that are investing their time and in watching this podcast aren't some fucking snowflakes that get like offended when when you say things that are truthful because the truth is a sword bro the truth is a sword people hate the fucking truth because you tell them the truth and they just it's not pretty like not it's never pretty you know like how many times in your life have you been told the truth and you're like oh fuck yeah like fuck yeah so i'm so glad i know that now you know it's like it's like my dad told me when i was younger he was like being a genius is a is a a blessing and a curse but more of a curse than it is a blessing and it's like an, i'm in no realm am i considering myself a genius but it's like the more i learn the deeper i go i'm like fuck man the more you learn the more you realize that you don't know yeah you know? yeah and it's just crazy and, and it's just so crazy to like look back to when i was in high school or even beyond that how fucking ignorant i was you know and it, it's just crazy because i had no fucking awareness whatsoever you know ignorant of what what the fuck was going on you know what i mean like anything like i didn't i think my biggest concern when i was up to the age of 18 was just like getting high fucking chicks partying partying that's it right. maybe Fortnite. i was pretty nasty at Fortnite. yeah but like that's literally it bro and it's like i look back i'm like how did i do that so like guilt-free now it's like i, I have such a like don't get me wrong i'll play video games every now and then and like enjoy them but it's how how you were just so present you know what i mean like when you were younger you were so present because you didn't understand how valuable your time was you weren't aware of it and and a lot of people aren't you know and it takes something to like break you out of it some some huge event like a heartbreak that's when you're like holy shit wait a second i need to start focusing on myself because there's only two routes you know you can go down you can just sit around all day you can try to get stuff done you know yeah bro and people people like me, my, myself included, I went through one of those fucking situations where the heartbreak was like, oh, it felt like a catastrophe, bro. Catastrophe, whatever the fucking word is. <laughs> and, and looking back in retrospect, it's like all these things happened so perfectly, bro. Like all of them happened so perfectly for your growth. And in that moment, it's really hard for you to realize. And this still happens to me and you, right? Like you lost what? Like upper six figures. But this sparked a fire in you, bro. Right? Like, that needed to happen. 300 Gs. And it was all because... (laughs) It was all freaking just... It was a lack of experience, bro. And those things grow you. Because I saw this quote on TikTok. It was very interesting. And it was talking about how uh, people evolve in two ways. One, with age. Or two, with pain. And usually it all starts with pain. And and the older that you get, the more pain you go through. Because some people... I've met some people, dude, that are like 60 years old. Been inside the Matrix their whole life. When I say the matrix, I mean just doing the same thing every single day, not thinking for themselves. Anything they hear on the news, they're like, yo, yo, that's so true. What? That's awesome. (laughs) I should wear a mask for two years straight. Let's do it. Oh, my fucking God, bro. It's crazy that people still be wearing masks. Like, they'll be in a car by themselves. 
wearing a mask. I'm like, bro, you are fucked. Like, there is no way that's a real human in there. Like, there's no <laughs> in, fucking in, shot. Inside of a car, completely isolated. isolated. Isolated from everything, still got a mask on. Hey, and bro. you can tell that's all just programming from the news, bro. Society, everyone's telling you that. Living in like, a complete state of fear, bro. Com- their life is jurisdicted by their fear. Like, imagine yeah. imagine making all of your decisions based on your your levels of fear in that moment. And a lot of people ask me, like, should I do this, bro? Like, I really don't want to do this. And I'll be like, bro, are you making this decision out of a place of fear or are you making it out of a place of love? Give me an example of what you mean. Um, it's like my friend texted me today and he's like, bro, like, I have a huge, huge offer to sell my business right now. Like, I could sell it for, like, $1.6 million. And I was just like, well... Why the fuck? Why would you not do that? And he's like, because like, what if someone gives it to me for more? And I'm like, bro, like, you're, you're like, yeah, he's thinking rationally, but he's also operating out of fear. Basically, whenever you say what if, nine times out of ten, it's like you're operating out of fear. I see. Right? Skydiving, perfect fucking example. Like, that's a perfect example. Like, the only reason someone would not want to skydive is be- psychedelics. Another perfect example. Right? The only reason you don't want to do those things is because you're scared and you're thinking about the outcome, but the outcome doesn't exist. And those two things, psychedelics and skydiving, are probably the most transformative experiences I've had in my life. And it's crazy because the amount of fear I had felt leading up to both of them was insane. Especially with psychedelics, dude. We could get into that for hours. Oh, you bro, know? I could talk fucking but, but the thing is with psychedelics, it's like once you do them, it changes your perspective either in a good way or a bad way. Like I've seen some of my friends, bro, they, they'll do psychedelics – they will literally go crazy. Like, I know this one dude, I'm not going to mention him, but he did him the other day, and he was in, like, this, do this I know dark him? place. You do know him. And it was, like, the mushrooms. He took the mushrooms, he goes to the beach, and out of nowhere, he starts getting bitten by mosquitoes. Oh, shit. And his mind goes crazy because there's mosquitoes biting him all over, and he's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Yeah, that would suck. He, that would really fucking suck. D- exactly, bro. He fell into, like, a, one of those bad trips, you know? And he fell into that bad trip, and I felt so bad for the guy because he was with his girl, and like his girl's like, oh my god, what do I do? He's, do I know the girl? You do. Okay, and, so I know the guy. And he, yeah, and he looks like a, a <laughs> monster, bro. That was the word that you, his girl described him—a monster. Because psychedelics, if you do them right, you go in with intention in a good environment. You can and get he just a ripped lot. him. He just ripped him. He just ripped him. Casu- like ripped he just him. took him like casually, like yeah, he just ate him like freaking Cheerios, bro. Just, you know, and he just stuffed yeah, him in his mouth, drank some orange juice, and dude, and shrooms, shrooms, like you have to be so fucking intentional about. It. Every minute detail of the entire trip, or you're gonna, you're gonna, you're you're in for something. Exactly, dude. Entirely. Like I want to talk about your shroom trip later on, but before we get too much into this, I want to lay out the structure for everyone watching here. Yeah, but so the the main structure of this, right? This is called NPC Podcast, and the reason why is because Alex and I, we we have this this mindset where our goal with this is to help people escape the matrix. Now that includes, like I was saying, emotionally financially, spiritually, even physically. Like, the Matrix has, uh, it will, you know, have its toll on your body, especially with the foods that you eat. People don't realize that. You look at fucking 80% of the population, bro, and you'll see it. Yeah. What, what was it? What was it like 70% of the population is overweight, 40% is obese in America? It's growing Something every day. Around there. Yeah, it's, dude, it's insane. But, uh, but yeah, no, that's, that's our main goal for this podcast, and we just want to spread awareness, guys. Help people wake up, talk the truth, we might even be banned from YouTube, who knows? <laughs> but once we are banned from YouTube, it's inevitable, yeah. the stuff we're talking about. But we're going yeah. over to the NPC platform, and that's what this whole thing is sponsored by. And um, we are creating something pretty big, which we'll talk about later. But Huge. Huge, huge. But uh, yeah, dude, let, let's, let's get in anyway. I want to ask you, just like for everyone new here, what the hell is the Matrix, right? The Matrix is a, a system that only works because of people's lack of awareness that there is a system, right? So there's this there's this analogy, there's this video I saw that I, I think is a perfect reference. So you put a bunch of flies in a container and you close the lid, right? You leave those flies in the container for like a day, two days, and you take the lid off. Those flies will never try to go above where the lid was ever again. I think, yeah, yeah. So there's like an illusionary lid, and that's how humans are. Like if you literally just look in traffic, there's it's a perfect example. None of these people drive outside. There's an emergency lane, and we've been taught, no, you can't drive there. No one, no one draws outside the lines. No one drives outside the lines, and that's just a perfect fucking example. It's it's us 
literally sacrificing our autonomy, which is like your ability to self-govern, which is like your ability to create your reality, your ability to make your own rules, right? We're sacrificing that because our lack of awareness that we've been put into a fucking box, right? Like you go into any middle-class suburban area, every single person is doing the same exact thing, right? And your environment begins to seem normal. So it's like, oh, Bob's just watching the news today. Whatever, I'm just going to watch the news today. Oh, everyone watches Jeopardy. I'll just watch Jeopardy. All of these things are like so... And once you once you realize that all these corporations are owned by the same group of people, right. the people with all the fucking money, you you start to think like, okay, what if I had everyone watching what I'm... I'm in charge of what right do you mean, what do you mean by that like if I if I was in in control of everything right and I had pretty much subliminal power over the masses what would I want to instill into their subconscious brain I see so so kind of like what the news does exactly what movies do bro it's in it's in fucking everything it's in it but the thing is is that they make it so subliminal that you don't recognize it right, right? that's that's why they call the news it's it's programming it's a tv program because they program you dude and you want to know what's interesting um remember way back like a year ago when i was in my prime when i was posting all the time when we first kind of bro you're not even fucking near your prime (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but way back in the day appreciate that likewise but uh way back in the day bro um remember when i was i was featured on if anyone's watching this and it was very interesting because when they flew out to my my um my house my apartment what I realized was they were just asking me, what, what do you want to put on? Like, what do you want to show us? Like, we, we want to cover you. We want to talk about your story, blah, blah, blah. But what do you want to see? Like, do you have proof that you made a million dollars? Yeah, I have, a, I have a screenshot and stuff. Like, I'll show you. And so, like, all right. I'm like, bro, what? You can, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this right now. Like, they, they didn't even ask for proof. Like, I was fine with showing them the proof, like, inside my crypto ledger. But they just said, yeah, screenshot. But imagine the it's people. It's just a fake fucking screenshot. Yeah. Like people people literally can go out there, just get a fake screenshot, show literally the news. I'm not going to say the outlet or the uh, the news. What is it called? News program. Channel. Channel fucking whatever. Whatever. News, I'm not going to say it. Um, but the main point is um, that you can say anything on these news. And that just proved it. I saw it in real time. It's like, what the hell? Like, dude, imagine what they're doing uh, on, on like a greater scale. Like if if one person like myself, I could just make a huge switch. I could tell people something, and it's not even real, which it was real, right? But I could have said something different. Imagine what they're doing at a much greater scale. You know bro, what I'm saying? It's it's so fucked, bro. It's like everything everything they want to show us is just to to skew your perception of reality. That's that's ultimately the the goal is because you walk outside your house, right? Like. A, a normal human will walk outside their house. Birds are chirping. The sun's shining. Beautiful world. But this person watches the news. They see, oh, my fucking God, Corona. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, everyone. Oh, my God, stock up. Stock up on food. You see the shit. Like, it it, it totally skews your perception. And once you, like, the book The Power of Now is one of the books that ultimately changes everything for me. Because... Before that, I would kind of look at the news and be like, wow, the world we're living in is actually kind of fucking crazy right now. And it is. Like, it's, it's, there's so much dark shit going on. But it's about finding that balance of, like, knowing that there's so much dark shit going on, but being able to look outside your window and be like, this is it. Like, this is the only thing that's real. You know what I mean? It's just life. And, and the thing is, when you say that, like, I understand you because I've went through not, not the same transformations. You're a lot older than me. I respect age a lot. But uh, like two years, three years, yeah, something like that. Some shit like that. But uh, I, what I've noticed is a lot of people when you say that to them, like now is the only thing you have. People are like, oh yeah, yeah. Then they it move doesn't on. sit, bro. It doesn't it, sit. No, no, no. It does. It doesn't like. It doesn't really sink into them, you know, because they don't. They don't understand. And half the things that they're told, because the attention span is under a second now in TikTok, you can scroll and just boom, boom, boom. So when you say <laughs> these things, it's like people they hear it, but they don't really internalize it, you know. So like. What is, how can you describe like now? Because you mentioned that, right? Now, like bro, what, what is now? Now has you no know? words to describe it. Now just is, right? Like you, our human brain is always trying to fucking label things so it can make itself comfortable and understand it. Now has no words. Now is just, it just is. The only word to describe now is is, right? Because 
when you when you when you put a label on something, you stop experiencing it for what it is, right? You look at a sunset, you go, "Oh, what a beautiful sunset!" But you can't beautiful. You can't just say a sunset's fucking beautiful, right? Because what is that? What the fuck is that? It just it just is. You know what I mean? Right. When you say something's bad, your brain correlates bad to everything else in your life that's supposedly bad. Now, now it just it just is, bro. Like it just it just is. Like it's when you shut off your human brain. You stop trying to label anything. You stop trying to understand what the fuck's going on. And you just allow yourself to fucking be. Exactly, bro. And and it's cool because I'll, I'll tell some people, like some of my friends, I'm like, yo, dude, uh, especially people back home, I'll be like, yo, try this. Because they don't understand that, right? And once you read the book, like, if you really take the time to read it, you'll be able to internalize it. But people that don't, what I say is go out, right? go on just a walk, for like 20 minutes. I know it's hard. <laughs> But try not to bring your phone, Yeah. right? People will go crazy and start tweaking out and stuff. And it's go for a walk, look around and look at the trees, right? Just, just there's trees everywhere. Look at the trees. And instead of saying, yo, that's a tree, right? Because as soon as you just give it is. a label, as soon as you give it a label, you're going to compare it to other things that are classified under that label. For example, if you say, oh, that's just a car. Immediately, you're going to compare it to all the other cars and be like, yo, okay, that's a crap car. That's a good. If you just look at it and you're like, yo. That's a tree. You get, you're going to just appreciate it for its beauty because everything has beauty. <laughs> Bro, our ancestors didn't didn't have labels for fucking everything. Like, it's such a simple way of living, bro. It's like we're, we're, humans try to overcomplicate everything, make things so much more difficult than they need to fucking be. And it's when you when you find that balance, like we're talking about, of okay, yeah, I know, like I can wrap my human head around this label at whatever I want, but it's just like. Why do I need to do that? Right. You know, it's just like, why do I? I think a lot of it is people don't know any other way, bro. Like from the day that they were born, they were told, okay, when you need to poop, sit down <laughs> on the toilet and poop, right? Imagine you were told to stand up when you poop. You would have been doing that your whole life. Yeah. The point is people, their whole lives, bro, they're just like, yo, this is what I've been told by my parents, right? Like, like what's the number thing? Number one thing? We're not going to get too much into it, but that, that woman want a relationship, right? If it is dry, there's no drama. There's nothing eventful. They get bored, bro. Yeah. That's why a lot of people they need some excitement, up. bro. Right, right, right. And, and it's just biological. I understand that, you know. Um, but that's why a lot of like Tate will say sometimes. I believe this was him. Inject some type of drama into your relationship. Now, I'm not just saying to spice it up. Right, right, right. It doesn't have to be toxic drama. Yeah. It could just be something, you know, some type of debate, right? Mm -hmm. Give it, make it interesting, right? But if it's just always, okay, yes, baby. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you want a milk? I'm going to drive 20 minutes to go get you some milk. Yeah, okay? fuck no. There's no way I'd ever do that shit. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, Sabrina, if you're watching this. Like, <laughs> like it, unless you're, like, it's, unless you're in, like, aching fucking pain and, like, right. having a child or some shit. Like, I think a lot of dudes just completely fucking idolize girls, bro. Just because they want some fucking coochie. Like, bro, stop watching fucking porn and then you'll realize, you'll start to see what girls are for what they are. Exactly. Exactly. Because then you just sexualize them in your head. Whenever you see a girl, you start comparing it to all the porn yeah. videos you watch and you're like, yo. I, dude, 97% 90, of super sexy chicks have nothing to provide you other than some box. Where, where'd you find that study? That's very interesting. That's a legit, <laughs> that's a legit stat. From from the Alex said like parable? Well, I mean, I yeah, yeah. I should write a fucking yeah. Bible. But, <laughs> bro, you literally just look on Instagram and it's just like most hot chicks are so used to getting anything they want because they're hot. They've never had to do anything. They've never had to learn. They've never had to try to make money because they can't just make money being fucking hot and take advantage of fucking soy boy losers. Yeah, it's it's fair. And I think that some women that are very attractive, they, they will put in the work to their, you know, to their credit. Some of them will put in the work. Because, you know, they'll go to they'll start going to the gym, work on their body, they'll try to work on their mentality, you know, their their emotional IQ, you know, their their EQ rather. Um, and they'll focus on that mainly to become better as a person. Mm -hmm. Because imagine you meet a girl, right? That's that's smoking hot, right? Mm -hmm. Um, pretty much my girlfriend, right? And <laughs> then imagine, right, you have another girl, the exact same girl. One of them is just extremely developed, is super mature, you know, they, they can they can speak without being toxic when you get into an argument. And then you look at another girl that's just like a little brat, right? She just gets all pissed. Whenever you say, no, I don't want to sleep over your house, she's like, yeah, come over, yeah. fuck you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? And it's like, you look at those two, and, and girls, they still can improve themselves, but like, you know, I, I see what you're saying at the same time. Like, some girls, they just take advantage of their looks, and they can do anything, you know? Like, they, they just go... Um, you see that thing? It, once again, this is a famous quote from Andrew Tate. There is a chessboard, 
right? And the men, they're the king. And the woman, they are the queen. So the king has to go step by step, box by box, all the way down to the end of the board. While the queen can just skip all the way there because it looks pretty, right? And it, it's just like, wow. And you apply that to real life. That man worked 20 years to buy that yacht. And yeah. That woman <laughs> took five minutes to send an Instagram <laughs> she took, DM. She took, <laughs> she took five minutes to post a hot Instagram picture. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, man. Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of fucked, bro. Like how, like, we we should literally start a movement of like dudes like stop praising hot chicks just because they're hot. Like if a girl has nothing to provide you, like why would you want that chick, bro? Like why would you? And there's a, the there's a quote. Bang. But dude, all boxes the fucking same, that, man. It, it, it's no, I'm not saying I do that, but I'm saying a lot of people yeah. they just want the potang. Yeah, bro. You know but like saying? they it's need like... to get it. Everyone needs to get it through their skull that it's just like, bro. Sex is fucking sex, man. Like it. What what people are really lacking is intimacy, bro. Intimacy. Yeah. Like legit fucking like intimacy, bro. Like it's and it's so hard because like you see we have Instagram now. We have fucking we have all this shit where we can look at all the other possibilities, right? So we can't even appreciate what we have right now because Oh bro, like what if? <laughs> like oh my gosh, she's so hot. Bro. <laughs> like, it's just like bro, like work on your fucking self and Yeah. Uh, fall in love with like someone's psyche bro like like i know you're young probably watching this i'm young but like i personally would not be with the chick unless she could be a good mother bro right i'm dude entirely bro like a lot of people will say date to marry and i, I follow that and i like that a little bit you know because if you're not dating to marry then why are you dating you know like at that point you're just dating for fun and i know yeah. you know you, that's what you want to vet them it's almost like vetting a girl for like like, I'll do it for, like, three, four months, bro. Every single time. I'll get to know them. Yeah. Make sure they're good. I'm like, okay, I can see myself maybe, you know. Yeah. You know? It's crazy how many dudes just, like, <laughs> talk to a girl for, like, two weekends and they just get... This This was me at one point. So I'm literally talking about myself. It's like, when I would... When I'd find a hot chick, I would get so fucking infatuated with them. Like, you remember last year, dude? I was talking, like, 20 chicks, right? And I'll tell you, like, oh, my God, bro, I fucking love this chick. Yeah, every day, new one. Yeah, and it's just like I would, I would fall so head over heels for them. I'd like push them away, right? And this is, I had to learn this the very hard way, bro. It's like these girls should be fighting for fucking me, bro, because people like you and I and all of our friends are very like hard to find, bro. Like a, a guy who is, and I, I hope this doesn't sound egotistical whatsoever. It's like the amount of dudes out there. Like if you look at the majority of dudes, what are they doing? You know, it's like watching porn. Smoking weed. Smoking weed, going to, to, to school. Eating shit processed Eating foods. shit. Like, like, the steps I had taken to get to where I'm at, like, automatically puts me in a, in a separate group. Same okay. with you. Same with all of our boys. And it's like, I, this was this is what I would be saying to myself. I'm like, why are these girls not fighting over me, bro? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I realized it's because, like, they, they want you to, they want to feel like you have 10 other chicks lined up. Right, because right, they want to feel like you have options because it's like a competition, bro. Right. It's more fun. But but real quick, relating this back to the Matrix, it's because men, since the day they were, they were born, bro, primarily because of social media, this is all they know, right? They just know, okay, you know what? If I get this hot chick, right, I DM her, whatever, I start showing her to my boys, it makes me look cooler, right? Yo, plus on top of that, I get to I get to bang some pipe, I get to feel good for fifteen minutes, then I go <laughs> home and get sad because I don't have an actual girl that loves me with. You know, yeah, right. not only social media, heart. not even social media, bro. Movies too. They're always putting the girl in the like the the higher position. Yes, like the dominant. Yeah, they they make them almost masculine, which just turns Dude, me. Dude, they're masculine. They're masculine. I don't fucking know the word. They're feminizing men and doing the opposite to girls. Yeah, and we're like, why? Dude, they're literally just trying to tear up the family unit from the inside out, dog. Yeah. Well, it, well how do you feel about this, right? There, there was a controversial statement made by Tate himself, and he said, I keep relating back to him, but I really do. He just has so much fucking content. Right, right. Like, how yeah. the fuck does this guy talk about exactly. everything? Like, I don't agree with all of it, and I'll, I'll get into that later. Like, some of his views on relationships I don't, uh, I don't align with, but a lot of it I do. And I remember him saying, um, I lost my train of thought. Where was I saying? Something that Andrew Tate said after I said feminized and... Men are being feminized and girls are being opposite. They're trying to tear up the family unit. I don't know. 
I don't know. I just started when as soon as we said that, I just started thinking about all the Tate things. But speaking of him, dude, with with the whole Matrix as a whole, right? He is just taking it, taking a hammer and smashing it. Mm-hmm. People don't like hearing that stuff. They don't they hate the truth. And everything that we're talking about right now, bro, it's all social programming. It's what the Matrix is. They want you to keep this inside. You know, give a give a man cheap entertainment, good food, and some sex, and he'll be fine for the rest of his yeah. life. Yeah. But mm-hmm. as soon as you start kind of looking outside of the matrix, like you just take a little peek, right? And that's what social media did. It allowed people inside the matrix to see other perspectives. You know, like we're not perfect, bro, but we're pretty fucking dope. And we've kind of escaped this matrix. And I see it as if you can go, I think you actually said this in your video, if you can go for a year without having to go to a nine to five, clocking in every day, sitting in traffic, going home to your wife that gets pissed because you didn't take out the damn trash, then you are not inside the matrix. If you can just live for a year paying your own rent. You know, that's that's what the shrooms taught me the other day, bro. What else did you learn? From the shrooms, bro. That was that was the main takeaway because it was a Monday fucking afternoon. You know, everyone is at work, and I just couldn't believe, like, I just could not believe I had this whole park to myself. I was like, yo, this is my fucking park right now. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. It's Monday, and I can just come here right now. Like, I have no, I have nothing tying me down, nothing at all. And I was like, bro, I fucking made it, bro. Like before that, I was so stressed because I was comparing myself to people who have. We're worth like fucking millions, and I'm not worth millions. And I would be like, bro, why the fuck am I not worth millions yet? What the fuck? I go to shrooms, and I'm like, bro, like, you made it. Yeah. Like, what is it? What can you not do? Right? Like, there's there's nothing. And it's just, like you said, bro, your goal should just be to not clock in and clock out. Like, you don't have to be a fucking patillionaire, man. Like, these things that you see, these things that everyone desires, like, those aren't the things that will make you fucking fulfilled. Like, Matt just had a fucking brand new Corvette. It's kind of nice. It was kind of nice, but, like, did it really fucking fire you up? No, dude. And that's why I, I sold it. You know, I sold the vet because I was even telling my parents this, bro. It's like, once I got it, it was the most impulsive buy I've ever made. Yep. And when I'm driving, I'm like, okay, this is cool. But my whole life, I've been driving a Tesla. Right. And like, why would I switch over to a gas car just to make people impressed? People that I don't even like just to make them impressed. Right. Just so I get more validation when I'm riding around. And sure, maybe when I had the vet, right, for probably a, in a span of a year, I probably got maybe, you know, 50 to 100 compliments. Right. When I'm just driving around with the top down. And sure, that made my ego feel good. But did I really love that? Is that what I wanted, right? I, did, I felt yeah. like when you were driving it, you were more scared to drive it than you could enjoy it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, Matt, yeah. you haven't hit 100 in this thing yet? <laughs> you're like, no, bro. I'm like, yeah. dude, it's a fucking Corvette. Like, what are you, dude, what are you that, talking about? That's the thing. It's like you, you want to be doing things that you genuinely love inside. And that's why I went back to Tesla, bro. And the Tesla cost around the same. Like I, tr- I traded a man. I got an extra what, 10, 20 Gs or something. It cost the fucking same. Yeah, the vet was 128 beans. A, yeah, I know it's a nice Tesla, but also the the value of the vet went down because um, the fucking markets. You seen the car market recently? Dude, it's fucking skyrocketing. What does it mean it went down? No, not the cars, bro. Oh yeah, because I bought it thirty thousand dollars over MSRP. Like, exactly, it, it's worth ninety k when I bought it, but then it just you know I bought it for one twenty because it was the only one in like central Massachusetts, and it was a pretty sexy one. Yeah, but it was dope. It, it was dope. Dude, and that's when I first, like, when I bought that, that's when I first made all my money. So I'm like, fuck it. You know, I'm just going to buy everything. <laughs> Dude, I, I would literally walk into stores, like, just drive around looking for stores. And I remember, I think this was the day after, the day after I cashed out, bro, and I, and I made a lot of money. I'm just driving around inside inside the vet. I'm like, okay, all right, what is, or not the vet, sorry, the Tesla before I had the vet. I'm like, oh, I look over, and there's just this, this, like, this motorbike dealership, yeah. right, with ATVs. And I walk in, and I'm like, okay, hey, dude, I want an ATV. Give me the best one you got. I just buy it. I've used it maybe twice. You yeah. still have it? Yeah, it, I actually just sold it the other day. Back, It's back in Massachusetts because I don't use it, bro. I remember but, telling me the story. I was like, bro, why the fuck would you buy an ATV? <laughs> but, the, the, <laughs> like, what? but my point is with that, it's like once you get a shit ton of money and you finally escape the matrix like financially, like, dude, both of us, we can confidently say we have you know we make money for ourselves you know and as soon as you get a shit ton of money that's when you just have this impulse that you've always had from a kid a lot of people do especially men they're just like oh my god i want to buy all this i want to buy the cool car i want i want bro, this, this i've learned this the hard way so many times it's, it's most of it's for validation bro so many times it's just like every time i'll get up to like this certain number in my like bank account or whatever I'll be like oh fuck i can i can go buy shit now because <laughs> whatever i have this much money 
And then, like, before I know it, there it goes. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, exactly. I got to restart. Like, fuck me. Not like restart, but, you know, yeah, it's I like know what you, mean. you have that number that's just like your comfort number. You got to get back to it. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, it's just kind of this vicious cycle. So it's kind of just like, dude, like, I've, I've stopped buying clothes and shit. Like, I've stopped buying shoes. I've stopped buying anything other than food. Like, all the money I would spend on clothes and shit, I just, I just spend on like steak. <laughs> I just nice. eat so much damn steak. That's it, bro. Because all of it's so unnecessary, man. Like once you once you realize it's just like it has no fucking value, man. Like once you have a certain amount of clothes, why do you need any more other than to like fit in or make other people have an impression on you? Like I've thought about getting rid of all of my clothes and literally just getting white shirts because like that's literally all I wear. Or like just yeah. create reality clothes because like. Like I bought a three thousand dollar Louis jacket. I've worn it probably. I saw that, yeah. I've probably worn it six or seven times. And I thought about selling it, but it is like a limited edition thing. But it's just like, fuck. Keep it, bro. Keep it to remind you of like your old spending habits and like your old mindset, bro. Yeah, that's true. Mindset more than anything, you know. Yeah, the evolution. Exactly the evolution of Sedlac, and and that brings that kind of brings us back into you know buying materialistic things. Like, question is. Why do people buy them? Well, the answer is it's fairly simple because people have this illusion yeah. that once they buy these things, they're going to be seen at a higher status. Why do they want to be but seen at a higher status? But the crazy thing is, bro, is like they kind of do because people are so brainwashed to think that these designer things represent a certain stature. That's the matrix, bro. That's, that's how they make that's the money. That's the matrix. That's the matrix. It's it's insane. It's completely the matrix. And and when they buy these things, right? Let's say, like for example, once you make all your money, right? Whatever. I know people that will literally buy fake chains, right? They'll buy all this fake stuff. They'll go out rent cars just to post pictures on Instagram so they get more chicks. Why do they want more chicks? So they get more putang. <laughs> and at the end of the day, what? What you're faking your whole life, Dude, right? Yeah, you get yeah. some sex, nice. You get a little jizz, and then you're sad after. Bro, I know uh, this one I kid. That. I know this one kid. You probably know him. This dude ha- literally fakes his entire presence. His entire presence. Like, I remember he came over this year and he's like, yeah, I don't even have to pay taxes because I haven't made that much. You look at his Instagram, he's verified. He's posting pictures in Ferraris, Rolls Royce, fucking designer, 400,000 fake followers. And I'm just like, bro. Oh, it's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it's just like, bro, like... I, like you can't be you can't be like you're doing this to like for who and like for who bro it's the ego bro at the end of the day they just want to feel better and a lot of it comes down to their childhood right because from an early age they were going through something right they didn't mm-hmm. feel powerful as a kid maybe they were abused. didn't get any attention or something right they were neglected so they're like okay you know what now i want i have this this, this craving inside to just become a beast so i get all this attention this yeah. validation and and you know it works sometimes bro the chicks, they'll give them attention. Bro, it's just like, like, like how, how empty would that make you feel, bro? Like waking up every day, be like, all right, I'm going to post this picture, and then I'm going to have to go buy some likes. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> like, fuck, man. You know the funny thing, bro? The funny thing is now you can do it where you pay a monthly subscription, right? And it'll automatically buy your likes, Bruh. right? Right? Right. And you guys can go check this out my Instagram. Like, I, I have like maybe a thousand likes a post. Right? I have horrible freaking engagement. And Dude, sure, you don't have horrible engagement. You have like thirty thousand followers. I guess. Yeah, it's all right though. Yeah. Well, but, you also don't fucking post, man. You post <laughs> like fucking once in a blue moon. Yeah, yeah. But when you do though, it's like what? I know. I'm like no shit. Matt posted. Yeah, yeah. I like your post too, bro. You got you have create like you have ten percent engagement on your post. Like it's that's, pretty wild. That's insane. Like for an influencer, it's it's crazy. Bro, my story, my story got twenty four thousand views the other day. What did it go viral or something? No, I have ninety thousand followers. Twenty four thousand people saw it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've cracked the story algorithm. You did. The story algorithm is just like post one picture. You post one picture with some fire words on it, and just let that one picture rip. I didn't know that. That's it. Damn, that's a tip for everyone out there. Just let it rip. That's it, dude. One fire picture, dude. It's 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 crazy because social media is essentially the matrix, right? But like. You have to, you have to know these things in order to capitalize off capitalism. I like that. Right? You have to like be, you have to kind of play the game to to an extent, right? Like, I'm playing the game probably for the next like three or four years of my life, and then by that time I'll be breaded up. I'm I'm out of this bitch. I'm going off the grid. 
buying a property that's self-sufficient, going to have a cow, going to have chickens, going to have a pond. Oh, wow. And I will not have, I'm going to have guns in like, I'm, I'm out of this bitch, bro. You see, <laughs> that's a good goal, bro. And you, you know what you said, bro? Like you said, what, three to four years? Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people, they can't even comprehend that because you're still in your right. 20s, Dude, bro. it's crazy how people lack the ability to think ahead. Be- because all of them, dude, every single person that goes through high school and then college, I, I want to say 97, 98% of people, right? They are told, right? They want to get to the top of the social hierarchy. They want to work their way. So maybe in high school, start at Starbucks, right? And the next goal is, yo, shit, I'm going to go to college, get a piece of paper, and then maybe, <laughs> maybe I can work at an office, right? Where I can clock in, clock out, make a solid, comfortable paycheck. I'll be comfortable. And maybe I'll find a wife there. And after 20 years, they get a big, fat beer belly, and they just start watching TV all day. And then maybe if they that go back insane. to school, they'll get a, they, they can become a doctor, right? Everyone sees them at the top. Doctors and you know surgeons and lawyers, they're at the top of what you call the matrix. And if you want to escape <laughs> it, bro, like like look at us. We're two we're two fuck asses, bro. Wait, is that still recording? Yeah, it says ISO record. Wait, is that red? Did he say red is good? Oh, uh, we have no idea. Are you just walk in on our podcast. Yeah, what the fuck is good with that? Hey, uh, but um yeah, no, but we're just two fucking bozos, dude. Bro, dude, it's crazy because I I love my sister, but she's becoming a doctor, and she's only ever studied the curriculum that she's been fed. And I've never had this conversation with her because she's she's kind of one of those people that it's like she's right regardless of what she said, regardless. Like, what do you she, mean she's right? Like she, she has will a good re- point she no she she refuses to not be right, right? Like she's one of those people. Like my dad's the same way. Like he can't be wrong, right? Because he's so caught up that he, whatever he learned is the only right. Like it's closed mindedness essentially. Essentially, so like I'll, I'll like bring up some shit about like how seed oils are horrible in all the shit, and she just gets like mad at me, bro. She'll, she'll get mad at me. I'm like, bro, what? What do you? Like, you're a doctor. Oh, why does she get mad? Because I, I I'll look at my fridge in my mom's house and I'll be like, mom, you really need to stop eating seed oils. Like, please stop. And my sister would just go, just let her live. I'm like, you're the fucking doctor here. <laughs> like, what do you mean? And it's crazy because all of these med students are so unaware that the curriculum they're learning is is funded by a corrupt person, right? Rockefeller, 1913. You can literally look at this. He funded the education board, gave them over a billion dollars in now's money to completely remove all holistic ways of healing. Everything. Give some examples. Everything, every natural way of treating something or someone is out of the curriculum. So now it's just simply pills, medicine. It's petro based medicine. Petro meaning petroleum based medicine, which is made from oil. Rockefeller was oil money. So he's now making, his, his family is one of the families that rule the world. Like when, when we talk about them and the elites, that's them, the Rockefeller family. So. We're still we're still learning this. It's been a hundred years, one hundred and ten years. We're still learning the same fucking curriculum that is it hasn't changed. So there's n- and not once. I follow this dude. He, he's on my podcast. His name's Carnivore MD. Paul Saladino. Oh, I he, saw that guy. Yeah, he has four degrees as a doctor. Not once was he ever asked to find the root cause of a disease. Not once. Why? Because you're just told you're taught to treat the symptom. Not no, not find fine. why it's caused. And it's all caused by what you're fucking eating and what you're consuming. But they don't want to talk about that. And that's cool because his content is all about that, dude. Like, you got me on to him. He's he, a just, G. he goes through every single product. He just walked through his store. Like, all right. I think he did one on Celsius, too. Like, yo, this is Celsius. What yeah, dude, Celsius, I found out some crazy shit. It, it's the, the sucralose, right? Inside of it. No, it has some fucking... I forget what it's called. It has, like, some fucking acid or something i can't i can't remember but it, it just ultimately absolutely destroys your gut yeah you know what my dad always told me bro mm-hmm. he told me look at the bag or the the ingredients on any type of food or a drink that you get right and if you can't pronounce the name of something <laughs> that's when it's fucking bad that's what that's what i tell everybody bro i'm like if you can't pronounce it why the fuck would you eat it yeah <laughs> yeah exactly bro exactly like, dude all i eat is steak steak and fruit because you know what I you know the ingredients in steak and fruit, steak and fruit, steak and fruit, what? butter. The ingredients, butter. 
right? Like, it's crazy how we've all just moved so far away from natural ways of living, right, bro? Like, like we live in these fucking boxes. We don't, we, we hardly even step barefoot in the grass. Hardly ever get to hug a fucking tree. We, 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 I was out there, I was tripping. And I'm like, at this river, and I'm like, thinking to myself, I was like, if I spawned right here, just randomly some crazy shit happened, and I was left with nothing but what I have right now, what would I do to survive? What would you do? No fucking idea, which is the sad part. <laughs> Humans don't know how to survive anymore. Out in the wild. We yeah. don't. We don't know. What, that's that's why we're so fucking unhappy, because we literally have no skills. We don't know how to survive. Well, we've transitioned, bro, from, like, physical skills, mainly, most people, into, like, types of mental skills, right? Like, for example, um, you know, at a computer, like, there's a large majority of people doing all their work at a computer. You know, they, they don't need any physical skill except, what, the little gamer, gamer hands? fucking insane. You know what I'm saying? It's well, fucking insane. We're just devolving. And it's crazy, like... You look back into some ancient texts, bro. Every every technology that we could possibly imagine has already been done. They just want us to think that we're fucking advanced, so they think, "Oh yeah, we're we're so smart, dude. We're fucking retarded as a civilization." I don't know if I can use the hard word. I don't really care. That is okay. I, I could see it, dude. We're stupid ways. as fuck. Nikola yeah. Tesla was able to do pretty much every, people. Uh, some random Joe schmoes have made water powered cars. And they what? die. They die. What do you mean water power? I've uh, never seen that. Uh, it did. Yeah, there's a reason. Uh, I see. I see. Dude, water powered cars. You know why prohibition was a thing? Because why? people started making cars that ran on ethanol, which was an alcohol. Right. Yeah. This is why they tried to ban alcohol. Really? Yeah. Right. Because who who was running the world when prohibition was a thing? Rockefeller. Hmm. A lot of things go back to him. Right? Dude, he's dude, literally, and his family still rules the world, bro. Him and the Rothschilds, they, 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 they literally rule everything. It's crazy shit, dude. Like, people people look at me like I'm fucking crazy when I post this shit on my Instagram, but they don't go down the rabbit hole, bro. Like, how are you gonna, how are you gonna tell me I'm wrong with something when you haven't studied the same shit that I've studied? And, and what's interesting is everything that we're saying right now, bro, it's like a lot of people, they won't be able to wrap their minds around it or just accept it. And that's when, I think our job, bro, like on social media, I'm more in like the financial realm, but you're more in like the the spiritual, mental, like just mm-hmm. waking the fuck up. Um, our job kind of, bro, is just to serve these people and help them escape the matrix. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the things that we're saying, dude, they're not going to accept. Like they won't. Yeah, I don't I don't expect that, bro. People have to find this shit themselves. You know, it's like I, I, I this is another thing I realized when I was on my shrimp trip is that like, dude, like I I. You know those spy puts? Like, they've made me fucking 15 grand in the past. Yeah, tell, tell them about the spy put, put journey. It's a fucking roller here. coaster, man. I was up 10K today, ended the day up 4K. Uh, roller coaster of emotions, but I'm still grateful to be up 4K. Um, but I've been telling my friends for the past fucking three weeks, I'm like, bro, buy spy puts. Just trust me, buy fucking spy puts. And now that I've, 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 I'll post on my Snapchat story, like, yo, holy fuck, crazy day. I've done this like six times. And now they're texting me like, all right, bro, I'm going to call you tonight. I'm like, dude, like, it's fucking too late. But anyway, what I was saying is like that, like, I'm just trying to help people, bro. Like, I'm trying to help people. And a lot of people are so comfortable that they're, they don't want to change. And I, I had to sit with that while I was tripping and be like, bro, all I can do is plant seeds in people's brains. It's up to them to do what they want to do with it. Right, plant seeds and then give them the guidance. Kind of like a teacher at school, you yeah. know. A lot of teachers suck nowadays. A lot of them are great, yeah. right? But yeah. a lot of people aren't passionate about it. And the cool thing about us is we're really passionate about the things we do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, let's say Jimmy, right? Jimmy's watching this podcast. My brother? You have a brother named Jimmy? I have a brother named Jimmy. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Who's yeah. Jimmy? All right, let's say Fred. Fred, all right. All right, Fred, uh, just, uh, Fred Bottomberger. He's watching your <laughs> podcast. What's up, Fred? <laughs> and he's like, yo... How do I escape the matrix with one single step? Just just the first step to get there, right? It's not going to yeah. take one step, but what does he do to just get started? Bro, be unfathomably mindful and intentional about what you do with your time. That's the That's all you need to do, really. It's like every little second of your day, where is it going? And it's not like your your physical form, where is it going, but your mental form, where is it going? Right, because like, we have infinite possibilities of what we can think about in our mind. But 
say 10% of those possibilities are things that are actually going to help you get to the next level. So it's like, where, where, where's it going every day? When you see something, does it take you off course? Be fucking mindful of those things that are taking you off course and then don't consume them anymore. Dude, and that's the thing. You said mind in there. 90% of the battle starts inside of your mind. And if you can conquer the battle there, you can win that battle. The actual action of doing it, like, for example, like, way back in the day when we first started getting into the gym, I guarantee you had the same mindset, right? You wake up, you're like, okay, yesterday, last night, I told myself I'm going to go to the gym. And then you're like, okay, I'm not feeling it. I just want to sit here, maybe eat a Kit Kat. Bro, you want me to be real with you? Order some Uber Eats. And then you don't end up actually going. Because you didn't win the battle in your mind. If you just told That's yourself, true. yo, I'm going to go, true. actually going to the gym is not that bad. Even if you go for 10, 20 minutes, just get into the consistent rhythm. 85% of success is showing up. Ex- exactly, But bro. if you want me to be real with you, that's never happened to me. Well, you're just a god. Dude, when it comes to the gym, I don't know what it is, bro, but there, it's just like, it's just one of those things where like, I'm, if I don't do it, I'm a fucking pussy. <laughs> and like, I, I'm, I'm going to do it every fucking day, except for today, because last night's jujitsu was fucking insane so you're telling me you've never just been sitting there and you're like oh i don't feel like going no, it's just like what else am i gonna do with my time you know what i mean well you probably have the thought at least but then you're like you know what? i'm just gonna do it and maybe you just don't <laughs> give in to the thought it's kind of just so embedded in my routine at this point bro it's like i wake up and within the first two hours of me being up i'm at the gym it's just like it's just like what it is yeah you know it's like it's kind of like a nine to five worker. They just know nine o'clock. They can clock yeah, in, and that's me with the gym, bro. Because yeah. how I show up to the gym and how I show up to jujitsu is how I show up in all of my life. And how you show up in one thing is how you show up in everything. Everything. Exactly, it's crazy, bro. dude. It's and, crazy. Then, and it, that goes exactly with what we were saying: with be fucking mindful of how you show up to everything, and what you're giving your time and your fucking energy. Because not very, very, very few things deserve your energy and your time. Right, like very fucking few things. Like I, I was there at my mom's, and she's watching like the news, and it, I'll, I'll give her. There was like the queen died, so I, I was just sitting here. And I'm just like, man, like this, this doesn't. Like, yeah, this is history, but but like this doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it is with the news, bro. That's how it is with TV. Like that's how it is with fucking ninety nine percent of shit. Like it, if it's not you building a, a relationship with someone, and like having fun, spreading love, doing something that you enjoy, making money, building yourself, reading, like, they, like what? It, exactly, bro. That, that gets into, like, passion, you know? Yeah. Because a lot of people, they'll choose their entire life based on what society and their parents want them to do, yeah. you know, especially the Asian culture. Because I know you're a white boy. I'm an Asian boy. I am white. And um, my man... <laughs> My mom, I, I love her very much. I respect her very much. But she always pushed college. Always pushed college. Why? Because she was born in a country, Thailand, that it was very hard to, like, really be successful there, you know? So to have the opportunity to be in the United States, it, it, it's seen as, like, a privilege, dude, because we don't really realize it. But in a lot of these third world countries, they never get the chance ever to <coughs> have a night where they go to bed being comfortable, not stressed out about money. Like, people go their whole lives without it. And a lot of people, dude, they'll live their entire life based off of what other people want, what their parents want, what their friends want. And then they don't even they don't even know who the hell they are anymore, bro. Like, they, they just went all the way through high school, college, got their piece of paper, check, check. Got and that piece of paper, man. Exactly. <laughs> and then they get their weekly paycheck. Right? They're happy with it. Or maybe it's bi-weekly, whatever it is. They grow old. They die, then they're walking around with a cane, and they're finally retired. But you can't even move around at that point. Yeah, you're fucking decrepit because you're filling your brain with fluoride your whole fucking life un- unknowingly. Now you have Alzheimer's. Exactly. Yo, but real talk, I gotta piss so bad. All right, you, you go piss. I think I gotta piss. Hold it down, hold it down. Yeah, I'll hold it down. This is interesting. You want to piss in a bottle? On no, stream? Whip out, whip out the, the wang? All right, yeah. All right, guys. Well, it's just me and you now. What I was saying was, before he took his little piss, um, it's that a lot of people, their entire lives, right, they will go through the the exact same thing every single day, and they'll be cool with it. That's fine, right? And for people that go to college and they want to live that life, I have nothing against it. A lot of people don't have anything against it. The main thing is, when you're doing that for other people's validation, 
where in the end, their ma- everyone's main goal is to focus on themselves in life. Because if you're not okay, you can't help other people. So why not focus on yourself for once? Right? And it's your time to finally escape the matrix and start thinking for yourself and do something that you're passionate about. If you're genuinely passionate about going to college, becoming a doctor, or becoming a veterinarian because you love animals, that's cool. But if you're just going for your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, well, bro, come on, man. You know you can you can do something new with your life, right? Maybe you like artwork. Right? I know this dude actually at the apartment complex that I, I live at. He, he was telling me how he didn't have a lot of money. He was pretty much broke. And his passion was, was art. So he turned art into a crazy business. Now he's living in a penthouse inside of Miami just making artwork. And like I bought some artwork for him from him he makes thousands of dollars every piece of art that he makes and it's all because he had a passion for it just because you want to make a lot of money doesn't mean that you can't do something that you're passionate about you can always find a way to turn anything into a business watch watch give me a name of something that people love doing golfing Golfing. you can turn that into a business what you do you create a youtube channel you start teaching beginners how to make golf or how to start golfing right tutorial videos boom you blow up Bada bing, bada boom. Or you create some type of golfing product because you love golfing. Then you turn that into a huge business. Another one. Boom. Something. Feeling like a new man. God damn. After you pissed? Holy shit. Dude, nice. it's crazy how you just can't fucking focus when you got to piss, man. And it's crazy. You know, it makes me think about all the distractions we have in our world. You know, it's just like mosquitoes. Like how many things are just like literally the same exact thing as a mosquito? Snapchat is essentially a mosquito. What do you mean mosquito? Snapchat is essentially... The urge to piss. I lost you, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't focus if you need to piss, bro. Like, you can't focus if you have Snapchat. Oh, I see. You're like, oh, shit. It's just distractions. Oh, shit. Snapchat. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. It's like the dopamine. Yeah, I'm all these fucking article. things that are just holding you back, bro. Yeah, no, that is that is very true. What are we at? 56 minutes right now? Nice. That's my longest podcast I've ever done, probably. No, yeah. I, uh, a couple. Yeah, yeah. A couple. I mean, we can start wrapping it up. I mean, uh, cheesecake. I guess <laughs> cheesecake. Yeah, oh. we're, we're wrapping. It sounds so good, man. We're wrapping. I haven't had cheesecake in so long. Yeah, dude. I mean, I haven't done a fucking hour long podcast in a minute. It's kind of just like it's just fucking just your brain, bro. It's fun, bro. It's really fun because you just get to speak your mind, you know. Yeah. But um, at the end of it, since we're coming towards the end, is there anything else it's Matrix related? Matrix related. Um, don't be a fucking bot. And <laughs> when I say don't be a bot, I say that with love. No bots. Don't be a bot. And what I say by don't be a bot is just be fucking think for yourself, dude. Like every every night, look at yourself in the mirror and be like, wh- where could my life have improved today? What could I have done more productively? Where what areas in my life are are lacking? Right. Like when I was doing shrooms, this is this is something I had to do. I had to seriously. Be brutally honest with myself. And a couple of the areas that I, I could improve on is like my attachment to money, my relationship with my girlfriend. I could be a better boyfriend. Not that I'm a bad one, but it's just like, bro, like I could be a better boyfriend, right? And it's just like being honest with myself and like calling out where I could improve. And I've been doing this for the past three years of my life, which is why I've gotten to where I've gotten is because I'll, I'll reflect at the end of every single day. I'd be like, okay, where did my time go today? Where did my energy go today? And if my time was spent scrolling and shit, I'll be brutally honest with myself. I'll be like, be like, what the? F-? I'll literally look in the mirror. Like people say this shit's crazy, but I'll look in the mirror and tell myself, like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Right. Back when I was younger and I had like a porn addiction, I'd literally look at myself in the mirror and be like, who the fuck are you, bro? Like, it's, and people say like being hard on yourself is like unnecessary. I think it's totally fucking necessary. I think the world is too soft. Like, I think people need to be harder on themselves. And the reason why people are hard on themselves is because they know that they have potential to do better, right? And when you're hard on yourself, it's you just realizing, like, I'm wasting my potential. And then when you have these psychedelic trips, you can't you, you can't suppress those thoughts anymore, right? They're going to come to the surface and you have to deal with them because you don't deal with them when you're, when you're conscious. And you don't really know it's you when you're, when you're not doing these psychedelics. But then when you're on the psychedelics, it becomes so prominent to the point you get a fucking a, a, a knot in your gut and you're like, oh my fucking God, like I need to deal with this right now. Like what's the solution to this problem? 
and then you find a solution to this problem because you don't want to feel that fucking way. You keep you keep putting it under the rug, and like that's that's why people be fucking lacking. Because a lot of it is unless your mind can create these thoughts and ideas for yourself. Because you're not your thoughts, you know. Everyone knows that. Well, a lot of people know that you're not your own thoughts. You can yeah. choose which ones to act on. Like if you get a thought to go eat candy, you can choose. Like, yo, that's just a thought in my brain. That's not really me. I'm just the observer of this. Especially and impulses, bro. Very much so. You'll have this. You'll have an impulse to go buy a Corvette. Like you're going to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but bro, <laughs> bro, I had I had the impulse to to go buy a new Beamer like three weeks ago, and I almost did. You didn't do it? I didn't do it. Nice. You observed I the thoughts. I even took it on a test drive. I was like, oh my God, do I do this? Which one was that? Dude, it was some sexy shit, bro. It was fucking awesome. But then I was just like thinking, I had like, dude, I literally signed the papers and I was about to pay it. Wait, you I, Oh, I wow. This close. Okay. This close. And like, I was like, can I just go home, think about it, come back later? And he was like, yeah, that's fine. So I go back home and I'm like, bro, what the f- how is this going to help me at all? Like, I'm literally going to dump, like, $30,000 into this car when I have two cars. Yeah. Like, and it's a Beamer. <laughs> One is a Beamer, literally. No, bro, you, you know, fuck you. You love it. I love Beamers, bro. I love you love Beamers. Beamers. Yeah, yeah, I know. I could never Beamer, man. Bro, you haven't driven a, a good Beamer. I, well, no, I just have this friend named Alex Sedlak that yeah. whenever he calls me, it's always about the Beamer breaking down. Your first one? <laughs> Oh my oh, god! The side of the road, man. It's just no. Fun. That did not happen. I ran over a tree stump, bro. I would say, see, bro. Was the <laughs> first one, I would, I would, I remember. I had eight hundred. I had like twelve hundred dollars to my in my to my name, and this is like when you and I first started connecting. You're like, "How you doing, bro?" I'm like, "Bro, I'm stressed. <laughs> I'm like, I'm fucking. My car's breaking down. I got twelve hundred bucks. Like, I don't even know if I'll be able to pay for the whole thing." But then you helped me. You helped me drop ship some LED lights. Yep. And the, that paid the bills. I was like, let's fucking go. <laughs> That's back when TikTok was a cheat code, bro. Like, oh, yeah. Organic ad, like organic videos were getting like 4,000 likes. It's... I'm just like, yo. Any, anything you posted, as long as it was semi-entertaining, it all just pop off. That's a know? really quality noise you just made right there. Oh, like in the that. headphones, it sounded <laughs> crazy. <I'm> like, oh, <laughs> <this is." laughs> That's cool. That's what's up. Yeah, no, but what I was saying with the psychedelics, bro, is a lot of those ideas that you have in psychedelics when you have them on the psychedelics you can go down a crazy path you know yeah. i have a friend that thought for a second it was on that bad trip he's like yo i want to move to colorado in a log cabin and then i'm gonna sell everything and just chill here shrooms make me want to like, do the same thing bro yeah and then, <laughs> they make me want to do the same shit and, and that's when people can go crazy on drugs so always stay safe yeah. ladies and gents don't do shrooms in public if you're ever gonna do them no and whatever you learn on them when you're sober reflect on it be like okay i was pretty fucking crazy Instead of just Dude, taking it's crazy. a flight. It's fucking crazy what that shit does to your consciousness. Like, it just sends it to a different dimension. It wakes you up, bro. Dude, like, it's like a, you're a computer, and you have, like, nine tabs open, and you can you can understand what's going on on every single tab at the same time. It's wild. It's fucking crazy, but dude. we do not condone shrooms. We don't condone drugs. This is not financial advice. Not financial advice. Not shrooms are... I, I, was, I would give a lot of credit to my success to the shrooms, bro, because they've they've helped me be real with myself right where like the first time i did shrooms i was in college i was in the dorms and i remember dude this i've never told this story before but i'm sitting there i'm doing shrooms and like these two kids that i like because my whole life leading up to this i've only ever hung out with like my hometown friends you know so it's like the boys yeah so it's like my hometown friends have the perception of me of like you're the kid they went to high school with so it's like as soon as i got into college like i was making friends left and fucking right and the kids that I grew up with weren't really. Like, they were just making friends with the people that I brought over. Yeah. So we, we all do shrooms. Everyone that was on our floor. And we're in a college dorm. Not the place to do shrooms. <laughs> not the place to do shrooms whatsoever. So there's, like, fucking five of us, six of us, tripping sack in a college dorm. And I remember, like, this sounds fucking crazy, but I was sitting in a chair just like this. And one of the kids, I like, new friends was sitting here. And the other one's sitting right here, and they're just like looking at me for like what to do and like what my my perceptions are and everything. And I just I, in that moment I realized like yo I'm a powerful dude. Like I, I always kind of like when had, was this uh, freshman year of college so 2019. Do you have followers? <clears throat> no, none. Oh uh, zero. This is before I started. This is like right. This is like pretty much what sparked me getting out of my depression, which is crazy because I was depressed like leading up to this because I was so unhappy being in college, which kind of where I'm, where I'm going with this <clears throat> so it's like these people like like the, it's a, it was like they were looking up to me 
right? And I was just like, this is like the first time this has ever happened other than like my little brothers. So I'm like, yo, like I'm kind of a powerful dude. I'm an influential dude. Like I'm sitting here, I'm thinking this. And like when you're on shrooms, your feelings are intensified. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you are feeling what you're fucking feeling. So I'm sitting here, I'm like, holy fuck, like I actually am a really powerful, influential dude. So then I sit there and I'm like, I'm... then we walk to the library. We go to the, the no talking floor of the library, yeah. which is crazy because like, why the fuck would we do that while on troops? But it went very well. So we're, we're all sitting there. It's pitch quiet and we're all just forced to deal with our thoughts. And I'm sitting here just being so brutally real with myself. I'm like, why the fuck am I in college? Why the fuck am I in college? Right. And like all the thoughts I was suppressing, I had to deal with because I didn't know. I had no idea why I was in college. And I was thinking like, well, the reason I'm here is because I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to make my mom proud. Right. I'm trying to make my, my family happy. Like I'm just, I didn't know what else to do. So I was like, all right, bro, like this, this school shit has affected my mental health so badly. Did you drop out? I dropped out nice. like the week after that. And you know, what's crazy, bro. The universe, like I, I hate how cliche the, the term the universe is right now because I I believe in God, but I'm not religious, so I'm agnostic, whatever. So I just call it the universe because God is another label for things. Like we talked about, like just don't put right. things in fucking labels. So that that fucking week after that, my my roommate snitches on me for having alcohol in my dorm. But the week before that, so this is all three weekends back to back. I do shrooms. I get an opportunity to go make thousands of dollars getting petitions signed. So I make like five grand and like to me, I'm like, oh my fucking God, like this is what I can do. Like I can get signatures and make 5,000 fucking dollars and I'm here in school doing nothing. And then the next weekend, my roommate snitches on me for having alcohol. And I'm like, bro, all of these, all of these events just led to me dropping out. And at the time I was like, oh my God, that's so fucking annoying. That's so inconvenient. But it all happened so fucking divinely. And it all started with me just being real. I wouldn't say you necessarily need a shroom trip to be real with yourself, but there's nothing that gets you in that heightened state like like psychedelics will. That was a fucking crazy story. So that was your first time? First time. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I did three and a half grams. Dude, bro. Oh my we god! We all did. We all did three and a half grams. That's bro. why you probably dropped out after that. It was. Know? It wasn't right after. It was like a couple days after. <laughs> But, but but that initiated the dropout. And it was after my fucking my fucking roommate snitched on me for drinking alcohol in my dorm. I'm like, bro, I'm in college. What do you fucking mean, bro? So I go talk to the fucking whatever advisor, and he's like, yeah, you have to go to this alcoholic anonymous class. Or I was like, okay, what happens if I just drop out? And he was like, you'll have no history that you even went to school here. I was like, all right, cool. My grades suck anyway. I'm dropping out. So I drop. I went upstairs, called my mom. I'm like, mom. I'm not a fucking alcoholic. I'm not going to alcoholic classes. I'm dropping out. She's like, all right. Wow, that's pretty, yeah. yeah that's... I have a video of it, too. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm doing it. Right, I'm doing gone, it. Man. she gone, man? The thing is, if you didn't do that, you wouldn't have escaped the Matrix. You probably would have, uh, I, I don't know your life, but you might have continued, you know, would you want to be a doctor, a lawyer? Or I wanted to be a realtor. Oh, that's big money. There you go. In the but, Matrix, that's but big it's, money. It's, it's Matrix money. Yeah. yeah. It's the gross part. Yeah. yeah. You're working around other people's schedules, bro. Yeah, that, that, that's the best part about escaping it. You choose, like, other people in the Matrix make their schedules based around Right, yours. bro, like, if we want to work <laughs> from right. midnight to 6 a.m., we can do that. Right, and then sleep all day. Sure. Sleep all fucking day, bro. Right. Like, today I just didn't work. I just traded. Made four grand. That's a little bit of work. A little bit. That's a little bit of work. I mean, I wouldn't say it was work. It was. It just took, just my, like fun. took my energy. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was giving my energy to my phone screen. But, like, I would much rather fucking do that than have to talk to people that are fucking stupid exactly exactly right you want to know what's funny dude this entire podcast we probably said some stuff that we think is just like chill you know like oh yeah we're just being honest we probably said some things that we don't even realize that might get us banned on youtube that'd be fucking that'd be a record getting banned on youtube (laughs) first first post first video i'd I'd make that go viral i'd be like yo posted a you posted a fucking podcast got banned first day that would be brutal Oh, dude, and no, we won't get banned. I talk about some shit on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I talk about shrooms. I use, I use the word retard. <laughs> but how do you, how do you feel about all these people getting banned? This, this it's is fucked, like, man. It's it's so fucking fucked. Gideon bro. Tate, Sneeko, Gideon. On. Yeah, I saw he got banned. He didn't even, he didn't even fucking say shit. I'm pretty sure it was on Twitch. Yeah, it was all over. What do you say? Look it up. I don't want. We need to fact check myself. Because, bro, like Gideon, like I thought he was soft. I thought he didn't talk about this shit. But like Sneeko, like I, 
praying for that boy because he's he's on the last draw for sure. Who? But it's Nico. Oh yeah. We're gonna get him on this podcast. Yeah, we're gonna get him on this podcast and this platform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, Gideon was banned on Twitch. For what? Permanently. I don't know, man. He said some stupid. That's fucking. Well, no, insane. he just he just either spoke the truth or something, man. Oh, for alleged being uh, alleged racism and sexism. See what I'm saying? It's like freedom but, of dude, expression is not allowed anymore. Bro, it's especially in the United States, you can't even have freedom of speech. Mark Zuckerberg literally like said in a fucking interview that fact checking is just opinionated. It's not it's not done by like someone <laughs> like it's just an opinion on the person who works at Facebook. It's a fair point. Right? It's just a fucking opinion. Wait, 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 wait. on on what? Like give me an example. Uh, like say I say being fat is unhealthy. Which it is. That's a fact. If that offends the person who's checking me at Facebook and they think, oh my god, no, he's not, they can ban me. If it gets in the eyes of the right person though. Maybe not. I mean, I'm sure there's policies against it because it's uh, like in in Europe, for example, it's called freedom of expression. That means you can say anything you want, right? Except things along the lines of directed intentional hate, Mm. racism, things that are, you know, know, saying something like being fat is unhealthy is not hate. Right. I I guess that's a fair point, especially in the U.S. Freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want. But but Thanks, just bro. saying that that's your own. I mean, I guess that's your your opinion on it that it's unhealthy. I think everyone has different perspectives. There's like, no, there, dude. There's no way around being fat is healthy. I think it's it's unhealthy compared to someone that goes to the gym every day, one hundred percent. But then let's say that you take someone that's morbidly obese and compare them to just a moderately overweight person. Technically, I mean, when we're doing comparisons, yeah. But like, how, how, it's like. It's like comparing rotten milk versus super rotten milk. You know, it's like obviously they both, <laughs> they're, they're both, they're, rotten. They're both rotten. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. They're like rotten apple versus super rotten apple. Right. Like right. you don't want it. You don't want you don't you want a good apple. You want a healthy apple. Right. Because when you're when you're overweight, what are the what is it? You have what are the things? Dude, you're you're a, you're more prone to everything. Like what? To lit- strokes, heart disease, heart attacks, everything. Your your immune system out the fucking window. Inflammation, your blood can't circulate as well. Your brain probably moves slower, dude. It's just like, if you look up fucking side effects of obesity, I'll look it up. Bro. See, see, that is what, dude. You should have said that all in the the first TikTok you made. Um, you know, dude, about, I said this shit. They just don't want to swallow you the said truth, this stuff? dude. I said it because when you say that, those are those are factual things based on studies that were done. So, you have dude, a fair everything point, bro. I said was based off a study. Right. I think. I think. Right, I said it. I said it in a in an offensive manner. Yeah, I, I mean, it could have been said differently. I somewhat, somewhat agreed with you, but my main point is, bro, like with this whole matrix stuff, guys. Just the main step, the first step is just think for yourself on everything. When you're about to eat something, just ask yourself, all right, I saw this on an advertisement. You're being bro, paid thing, millions of dollars. Dude, is this really good for me? You know, what is that? Bro, the thing is, is fucking. People have a huge misconception on what food is. Like, almost everybody, like, I don't even want to give a statistic because it's something like 99% have the perspective on food as pleasure rather than food as fuel. We don't need to eat a lot at all. Like, you just told me earlier today, like, bro, you're getting bigger. I eat one, two, or three steaks a day, and that is it. That's it. That's fucking it. That's all you need. I don't have protein shakes. I don't have fucking... Pizza, because I, I I I have become mindful of like okay why am I eating? Do I need this food or am I doing it for pleasure? But then there's gonna be people out there that'll say, "Bro, enjoy life a little bit, bro." Bro, those guys are just addicted to the dopamine that their yeah. food gives them. Like people that just eat candy every single day, it's not because you enjoy it, dude. It's because you're mentally addicted to that dopamine rush that it gives you when you eat it. And if you can retrain yourself to do what you do, bro, because I've started doing that the past like few months. Remember when I went silent and I just stopped talking to everyone, bro? I do remember that. I, I was watching you. I was watching your videos. All right, bro. Look at the look at the list of what being obese puts you prone to. Stroke, gall, ba- gall, so here, gall here we go. We cheese. Got, we got all causes of death. But you said cheese. So being obese puts you more prone to all causes of death. What the fuck? High blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, stroke, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, Breathing problems, 
many types of cancer, low quality of life, mental illnesses, body pain, and difficulty with physical functioning. You're literally a fucking robot. <laughs> but the cool part is you get yes. to feel good when you start eating nice Yeah, you, food. you feel good for a good 10, 10 minutes. Oh, not even, bro. As soon as it enters your stomach, it's like, that's gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I have a friend who was in a was in a body lifting or a bodybuilding competition went from overweight got incredibly shredded i know that the cameraman right yeah yeah and he like i hope he doesn't mind me saying this because it's just an inspiring story i mean like it, it shows you like this shit's real and he t- he took responsibility for his him being overweight which led him to being like okay i'm done thinking looking like this i'm gonna i'm gonna get shredded so he did he got fucking leaner than I am. And once he was done with the competition, he had no reason to be healthy anymore. So he started binge eating. He would order a pizza a night and eat the whole pizza to himself. He would order a box of donuts, 12 big donuts, eat the whole thing to himself. And he was like, his his rationalization was that he was he was bulking, right? And I he came, so, he came okay. over to my house. He came over to my house to film. And... He would be eating pizza. He'd just, he'd just be eating whatever. I'd be like, I'd be like, bro, like, what, are are you bulking? And he'd be like, yeah, man, it's really weird because like, I was super shredded and now it's just fucking, like, I, I I feel fat. I'm like, bro, you want me to be honest with you? Like, you're you're pretty fucking big. He get big again? Oh, he got he got pretty big. How long ago was this? Like two weeks ago. And oh, I saw him all yoked and shit. Yeah, he was fucking shredded. And he was telling me, he's like, yeah, man, I'm bulking. It's just really hard to find the balance. I'm like, bro, you can bulk by eating healthy foods. Like, you just have to eat more healthy foods. Well, you're eating complete junk and rationalizing it by saying you're bulking. He's like, you're fucking right, man. And then we, we were talking to Abe. He, he's doing a really good job at, like, changing his habits now. He's eating, he's eating really clean. I'm proud of him. Uh, good. Same, bro. Same, bro. And he was, he was telling Abe, Abe's like, damn, I can't. I just don't understand how people just fucking eat all the time. And then he said... He was like, well, I just think it matters if the person's happy. And I go, yeah, you know what? I agree. But as long as the person is actually happy. Right. And he goes, fuck, man. Because the mind and body are connected, bro. If you're treating your body like absolute shit, <laughs> your Dude, mind your, is going to fall. Your mind knows. Your mind knows, bro. This is the thing. Like, if, if, if someone who is overweight did shrooms, I guarantee they would look at themselves in the mirror and be like, bro, I got to change. Like, I have to, I have to change my ways. Like, because when I look at myself in the mirror and I'm on shrooms, I see a monkey. I start going. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, bro. It, it brings out your inner just yeah, primal yeah, instincts. Bro. I, I, uh, I just feel grateful, bro. Because I'm like, I am healthy as shit, man. And I, I choose to be healthy as fuck. And I wouldn't, I would like, and I can confidently say this shit, bro. I can confidently say I'm so happy with my body. And I don't, and it's just like, you know, if people, you know, one of the one of the depopulation agendas is to get rid of the useless eaters. Yeah, what? bro, it's crazy, They're crazy shit. Useless eaters. I mean, I know some eaters that are. Dude, I mean, think about how useful. many useful eaters there are, though. That's fair. There's probably a lot of useful non-eaters. Dude, what do you mean? Be, uh, like, be more specific. What do you mean? So I don't know if I can even talk about the depopulation agenda on YouTube, but like, that's the whole goal with fucking COVID. Yeah. Uh, food shortages that are coming. Okay. It, dude, it's just depopulation. Um, Even Elon Musk said that. He said that's one of the things that could happen. Oh, dude, we're we're headed there right now. <laughs> Sudden adult death syndrome. People are just fucking dying out of nowhere. I wonder how that's happening. Um, but the main the the main objective is we need like we're literally destroying the planet not by cutting down the trees by but so much farmland by just reusing and reusing and reusing the same soil. We are fucking that soil. Right, but we need to feed billions of fucking people. So, how do we how do we get rid of these people? We get to get rid of the people who are adding nothing to the world and just eating our food. Those are called useless eaters. Like oh, I see. It, I, I know it sounds so fucked when I talk about it. This is not my concept. Just letting you guys know that's this is like I've heard this. I've heard this elsewhere, and it's just like think about how many people are just stuffing their faces and do nothing. With it, with their their lives, right? And like one of the one They're of the just main surviving, bro, barely. One of the one, <laughs> one of the main th- like reasons. One of the things that people when I posted that video about the overweight model, 
they'd say to me like, "Oh my God, we're just existing." Yeah, you can't you can't accept the fact that we're just existing. I'm like, right. yeah, because that's all you're fucking doing <laughs> is you're existing and that's it. Like, they, they're I'm not gonna say there, but like, because that's pretty subjective. But like, the people that were giving me shit, like, you're, like you, you gotta add something to the planet, bro. You have to help people in some sort of way, and when like that's what you're doing, like you're just you're not you're not helping anybody. And in my opinion. I I see it when it's a man. It's two times worse because a man, you're supposed to have a purpose, bro. You're supposed to. As a man, you're supposed to have something that you're genuinely working towards every single day. Yeah. And when you get off that purpose, what are you? Like you're missing your instinctual role as a man, dude. And woman, their main goal in life is just to reproduce, right? Yeah. And 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 when you're overweight, <laughs> the the risk of uh, what's it called? Miscarriage is like ten x. Bro, what I really want to talk about is how China, TikTok is a Chinese communist uh, app where it's like they're, the For You page is a, basically a, a TikTok, like a Chinese agenda. So, for example, this that one chick that posted a video that tried to cancel me, Drew Buffalo. Her name's like Drew Afulo or some shit. Can't call her out, huh? She is the biggest enabler on the fucking planet, dude. Seven million followers and she's just in, enabling people saying like yo be overweight it's it's fucking fine right like you're enabling an unhealthy lifestyle and tiktok promotes the fuck out of that because tiktok yeah. in china don't or america and china don't get a fucking long you go over to china what's tiktok in china like you can only scroll for fucking like 15 minutes at a time really and i didn't then, know that and then they kick you off wow right america you can scroll all day long it's america you see man. a bunch of feminist liberal fucking content not that i'm republican or liberal but there's a common theme amongst, you know, but, and and then she body shames men like entirely. She literally did that to you too, didn't she? Yeah. She, she, she called me like a fucking Jake Paul lookalike or some shit. Like I was supposed to be offended by it. I wasn't calling anybody out. I was just saying being overweight is not healthy. She comes at me saying, you look like fucking Jake Paul. Your fucking seashell necklace. It, it hurts their feelings, bro. They don't want to hear exactly. that. Exactly. This is what I'm saying though, but she's enabling millions of people. And those are the people that are leading our generation. Yep. And that's why I'm saying when people like Tate come along and people that actually have true value and, and just the truth and they start saying it, instead of just making people feel more comfortable, do you think Sneeko and Tate and you and me and, and Eric and all the Abraham, all these people that are just speaking the truth, bro, you really think that we're making people comfortable? No, no we're pushing them outside their comfort zone. But everyone's so prone to be comfortable. They like hearing that stuff that... Yep. For example, that lady was saying, you know, they love hearing it because it makes them feel like, oh, you know what? It's like I, I fit in. I have, yeah. I have people that agree with me. Everyone's doing this, right? Yep. The, the sh all the sheep are doing it. I want to be a sheep too. Let me I don't want to be a fucking sheep. Let me eat food all day. <laughs> oh, fuck. Can, can you say what you said in the car? That was so funny when you when you <laughs> said you went to this water park. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, nine out of ten people were criminally overweight. <laughs> nine out of ten. And, and that's that's okay. I mean, that's their own life, you know. But uh, but dude, it's just like, uh, it's just like it, it, I, I don't want to let other people's actions up, like affect my mood. But it's just like, bro, how are we going to change the world if we can't even take care of ourselves? And especially for people like us, bro, it hurts because we're genuinely trying to make an impact yeah. on our generation. And these and some people, some influencers are holding us back, bro. Like so we're, we're trying to push, them. we're trying to push, and they're just coming down ten times. Stronger. They're like, "Yo, it's let like, me waste your time and fill your brain with fucking nonsense." And people love it because they don't yeah. want to think. People feel, don't want to think, bro. They feel comfortable. It's no work involved. They can just accept their current state, you know. And then someone comes in like us, and it's like, "Yo, change your perspective on food. Don't eat this unhealthy stuff. Skittles are horrible for you. They're gonna kill you. This, that, and that." They're like, "Oh, that means I have to stop my addiction." I need to change my whole way of life, and that's hard, bro. That's really hard. That's hard. The, you gotta the, conquer doing your mind. what's the best one, and the reason why it like upsets people like you, me, Eric, and fucking everybody that is because we put in fucking effort to look the way we look, to eat like we're conscious of how we eat, how we move, how we sleep. We're conscious of everything, bro. Like we're working for the shit, and people just like act like we're just like this. Yeah. You know, it's like if we wanted to be fucking unhealthy, we could easily do it. All right. But it's just like we're we're conscious, and and that's the first step to escaping the matrix. First, taking control of your consciousness, your mind, and then your body. Dude, 
you need to can take control of your mind before anything. Become yeah, incredibly that. mindful of everything you consume. Media, social media, and food. Like, how are, like, you have to be aware of what you're consuming. Don't be an NPC. Don't be an NPC. Don't be a bot. Don't be a bot. But you know that in Thailand, the name of the currency is bot? Yeah, you want some bot? It's I guess they're sus. all bots over there. It's kind of sus. I'm, I'm, I'm shaming on my own country. Yeah. No, but, but it is pretty dope. We should go to Thailand, bro. bro that'd be some crazy shit. Yeah, we got to get passports. I have to do it before uh, the world absolutely hits the fan in the next couple of months here. Oh, jeez. Oh, yep. You guys don't even want to hear about that in this episode. No, we'll save that for next. And actually, for our next episode, I have something very interesting. I want to talk about relationships on the next one. Mm. I really do. And like kind of the inside the matrix still around that that realm, but how NPCs... I could have Sabrina pull up, if you, and then she could have a girl perspective. I was going to have... We could have Sabrina. I was going to have Mary Ann come through. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. I don't know if she'll pull through, but we'll see. Mary Ann, Sabrina's if really, come. really good on podcasts. Oh, I bet. Yeah, she's she's very woke, bro. Yeah, she's smart. As well. Yeah, yeah. You you have a very smart girl. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm fucking picky out here. Oh yeah, dude, guys. Alex, he's the pickiest mother truck, right? <laughs> because sure, in his past, he did his thing. He's, he he scouted them all out, but to actually date someone, I've never seen this man in a relationship since I met him, ever. And then out of nowhere, it's this like Sabrina. You're like, dude, you always talk highly about her. It's like, and she's your type, too. She's my type. Brown hair, blonde eyes. Brown hair, blonde eyes. Right. <laughs> blonde, brown eyes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, bro. Well, cool. yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in here today. If you watch this whole thing, you're a fucking top G. Top G. DM me on Instagram if you watch this whole thing, and I'll give you a kiss. Oh, wow, a virtual kiss? I'll actually give you a dollar. I will Venmo you a dollar if you watch this whole podcast. But you send it in a mail so you can sign the dollar. Yeah, I, nah, that's too much. But I will <laughs> Venmo you a dollar if you watch this whole podcast. Nice. Nice. But yeah, guys, Escape the Matrix. If you want to start, start here with NPC Podcast. Appreciate you guys all tuning in. Check out Alex Sedlak at, what is it? At Alex Sedlak 1. This is Alex Sedlak on everything. On, on everything. On everything. Nice. At Matt Lorian on everything, too. And stay tuned. We got something big coming because we're going to get banned on YouTube eventually. We it's got not something. If, it's huge when. Coming. Huge in the play. So if you guys want to check it out, in the description, go to npccoin.io. We're making a platform where people can finally post freedom of expression. Freedom of expression. <laughs> freedom of expression. You can say what you want as long as. Anything you really want on our platform, to a certain extent, of course. But the main point of this platform is so that people like us, Alex gets censored. I get censored. I want to post a video, it gets banned in all of Europe. Sneeko, he's getting banned. Gideon, <laughs> Andrew Tate, we're making a platform. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> making a platform for the influencers built by influencers. So appreciate you guys. More influencers in. by influencers. NPCcoin.io. Oh, yeah. Escape the Matrix. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Sponsored by npccoin.io. Much love, guys. Much love. Peace out, boys. Peace out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. John Cena. <laughs>